Good evening, everyone, and thank you for kindly accepting our invitation to join this webinar. I am Professor Janet Mufsut, and I am presently Head of Department of the Department of Clinical Pharmacology and Therapeutics. And this is a, this is a webinar today in which we will describe the two courses which we are offering in our department. So first of all, I would like to introduce, so what we are going to do today is explain who we are as a department, introduce the department, and then give an overview of the two courses, our BSc in Pharmacology course, and an overview of our Masters in Pharmacotoxicology. Um, I would like to remind you that our email address, should you have any queries at any stage, you will have a Q&A afterwards at the end of our short presentation. But if you feel you need more information, please don't hesitate to contact us, send us an email on pharmacology.ms at um.edu.nt or else via our Facebook page, uh, which you will find easily if you just put in Clinical Pharmacology and Therapeutics University of Malta. So first of all, I would like to introduce myself. As, our, as I said, I'm the head of the department, uh, Janet Mufsud. Other members of the department are Professor Roger Alun Mikalle, Professor Anthony Fanek, who you can see over here, with the screen on, he is waving to you right now. Professor Maria Cordina, who is the course coordinator for the BSc, and she will also be uh, uh, explaining. Uh, Dr. Vanessa Petroni Magri and Dr. Lorna bon Bonici West will be joining us uh, sh shortly. Mr. Mark Zammit, who coordinates the Masters of Pharmacotoxicology with me. Then we have our administrative staff, Ms. Vetlana Toma and Ms. Margaret Risser Richards, together to our uh, technical staff, Anthony Butigic and Mirka Pereira. And this evening, we are very pleased to have with us four students' representatives. So we have two representatives of the Bachelor in Pharmacology course. Ms. Maya Ines Camilleri Sacco there, she's waving as well, and Ms. Janelle Kassar, uh, who unfortunately has some problems with her video, but she's there as well. Together with two representatives of our Masters in Pharmacotoxicology course, Mr. Jake Shikluna, there he is, and Mr. Daniel Katkuti. And throughout this presentation, you will see lots of photos of our students looking very happy, I hope, and which will encourage you to join these two courses. So this was actually after our Christmas party last December. So what is pharmacology? Some of you may be asking, but what is the difference between pharmacy and pharmacology? Pharmacology, I like to put it very simply, is how medicines work. So they are the persons who are discovering new medicines. As you can see here on this presentation, pharmacology is the science of medicines and their effects on the body. So we are the, at the back end. Uh, of <laughs> discovering new medicines. We research and develop new medicines, improve our understandings of how medicines work, what it is that they do, and make sure they are used effectively and safely for everyone. Pharmacy students, yes, do also cover pharmacology in their course, not to a big extent, of course, that we do in this bachelor degree. Um, and they are more communicating with patients rather than you know, more at the scientific aspects of research. So to start, I will hand over now to Professor Maria Cordina, who will give you an overview of the Bachelor in Pharmacology course. May I ask you, we have the chat facility, so please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to up, put, note them in the chat. Professor Fennec is taking note of any questions you may have, and there is also a live Q&A if you wish. I do also remind you that this presentation is being recorded and it will be available over on our website uh, shortly. Uh, Professor Cordina. Thank you, Professor Sult. Um, how many, how many, how many um, followers do we have? Professor Venek, I hope we have a few anyway. Ah, excellent. So we have this the course, which is a BSc in pharmacology. It's a, it is a full-time course. As a faculty, we are part of the Faculty of Medicine and Surgery. So we fall within the umbrella of the Faculty of Medicine and Surgery and the course lasts for three years. It is a very intensive three years, okay? But that does not mean that you don't have a life or you don't have time to enjoy yourselves because for us as a department, 
we are happy that you have a very balanced life at university, which is extremely important. As you can see with all these nice, interesting photos, medicines have evolved over time. We have learned a lot about them. This best photo over here are what the title says, crude medicines. Uh, um, we look at them and laugh today. Sometimes you will also find an opioid in those to, to stop the cough. Some things, these things we don't have um, any longer. Then we moved on to more conventional and synthetic drugs, the packs that you actually see today. And now we are moving further. We're moving further where we have personalized medicines. So we are looking at medicine that targets individuals. This is individuals, okay? Not sicknesses or people in general, a person with very, very particular conditions at a very, very basic level. This is what we call cutting edge. I am very happy to say that within our department, we have experts in this field, um, such as Professor Fenech, who works on what we call pharmacogenetics. So as a department, we are very, very much on, we're very advanced, so as to say, um, a plus of this course is also that it is a young course. So we, we don't have sort of like preconceived ideas. We work every day, literally every day, to bring in new concepts into the course and fresh ideas. Um, so that is a plus if you join us. Now, as Professor Mitsut said, what is a pharmacologist? What does a pharmacologist do? Here we have a really great photo. These are our students who have just or are just half past first year. You, all our students are always smiling. They don't just smile for the photo, okay? They're always happy. So there are some students online. If you don't agree with me, girls and boys, you can uh, contradict me, but I don't think you will because for us, the happiness of our students is also very, very important. We don't take our students for granted. So what can a pharmacologist do? Where can a pharmacologist work? This is something that we, we, we get asked a, a lot because um, maybe a medic, a doctor is well-defined. Maybe a pharmacist is well-defined, but people ask us, young people ask us, if I do the pharmacology course work, what can I do with it after three years? Well, you can stop at three years with a first degree. And as you can see here, you have a myriad of opportunities, which I will skim through. And then you can continue studying to a master's degree or even a PhD. Master's degree, you can choose various. And now we also have a, an, an innovative, um, the, the, which uh, Professor Mitsu will speak about pharmacotoxicology degree, which is very something which is again uh, a significant necessity for our country, but also masters in basic pharmacology. My area is more clinical and social. So there's lots of opportunities. So where can you work? You can work in medicines development. You can definitely work in industry, okay? Pharmaceutical industry and edit any other type of um, basic uh, industry that requires a basic science with, with knowledge about laboratory knowledge, um, any laboratory. You can work in analysis of medicines. You can work in drug information, um, in a clinical understanding, it's very clinical setting supportive. Huh? Uh, you can work in regulatory affairs. You can work in um, public health also. You can work in medical writing. You can combine. So there's a lot to do. This is not a degree, and there is a, a significant demand. In fact, especially in industry, in pharmaceutical industry, which is a mushrooming industry in our country, um, there is significant demand for people with the skill sets that you would graduate with. So these are all that I have repeated, pharmaceutical manufacturing analysis, DNA laboratories. As we said, there is Professor Fennec who heads our DNA section, DNA and drugs, um, genetics and drugs, which is extremely important and the future of pharmacology and medicines. Um, you, you will be um, exposed significantly to this. Obviously, then there are other things. Maybe if you don't want to further your education, want to do medical representation, it's, it's a possibility. You can work in importation. 
And obviously, there is always the option of working with us in research and academia. Now, um, I have, I think, yes, we have one thing we would like to tell you is that as students within our course, you will have access and eligible to become members of the British Pharmacological Society. It is with great pride that we say that our course is in line with and endorsed by the British Pharmacological Society. We have both Professor Mifsud and uh, Professor Fennick, who are fellows of the British Pharmacological Society. We work very closely with them. We have excellent reviews from them. And our course, um, we strive always to be and make the latest um, updates in our course that is recommended. This website also gives you insights into careers which can um, you can take. Obviously, from this course is recognized internationally, so uh, you can choose to continue your studies abroad also. Um, another aspect, I'm not sure. Okay, let me go to the course structure. The course structure is a spiral course. That, that's what that means. <laughs> um, the first year, we give you a basic introduction to a number of areas. Okay. The second year is an intermediate. We build on that. All right. So things become more detailed because you can handle them better. So the first year is a basic year. We equip you with certain basic skills and knowledge. In the second year, we try to make you um, we, we give you more detail and try to make you apply those skills. The third year is the advanced year, where we put it all together and where you also have to present, work on and present your dissertation. OK, so we also incorporate some research in that. Our structure, we have formal lectures and um, the traditional what we call classroom style. We have seminars and we have laboratory based and clinically based activities. Now, it is very important that since these years, as you can see here, they are in the closet. Oh, dear, that's me. And that's a very real, I think. Yes, that's a very real of me and the students. The second year is this. Um, I didn't come so good, but I don't come good in the real, it doesn't matter. Um, since we have small numbers, literally our lectures are uh, very interactive. So our lectures are like tutorials all the time. We encourage students to ask questions and we have a very close relationship with our students. We know all their names um, and we are always open to supporting them and guiding them in the best way they need support. We have many people, it's not just the three of us, obviously, there are many people giving lectures um, and we select these people we try to do our best to select the best people who can give you the best with the best expertise in the area that they are teaching. Now, um, we have research and training. As we said, the research and training can be broadly divided into, into two main strands. We have the molecular pharmacology, um, which, as I said, is led by Professor Fennec. It's hands-on, it's... it's um, advanced training techniques and here you will learn how to research conduct research using cell cultures rna dna very cool stuff you know what you see on television and in films it's all there um, looking at cell lines genes studying the effects of of medicines on different um different dna rna proteins okay and how am i doing professor Benek, how am i doing because this is not my field the other one is my field so then we have clinical pharmacology, which is um, Professor Mifsud is involved in that and, and myself. Here we look at patients. It's more patient oriented. It's more clinical. We do studies which are epidemiolog epidemiological. We also look at the area which is social pharmacology. We look at medication safety. It's a very important area in enhancing medication safety. So um, the, my area is particularly the interface between the medicine and the patient, okay? Because we can do loads of stuff, but unless we have the patient who is the focus, we, we, we um, don't manage anything. So, okay, next slide. So, um, yes, now our university, it is necessary for us that um, every after every year, if a student, um, the, they for some reason, 
they would like to leave at some point in time after a year, um, you have to have some sort of exit qualification. So if after your first year um, and you have passed your exams, you feel that it's not the course for you or something has happened or you want to change course, you, you get awarded and you don't want to continue with the three years, you get awarded a diploma in pharmacology. If you this happens after the second year, you get a higher diploma in pharmacology. Obviously, if you stay for the three years, you get a, a BSc in pharmacology. It's very important to tell you that if after you do the BSc in pharmacology, you would like to enter um, the course uh, to become a doctor for medicine and surgery, you can do that because it is approved as an eligible qualification for the entry into doctor of medicine and surgery. So irrespective of what you got at, at, at your A-levels or how you entered. Now, this is a very, very, very fun part of the course, which uh, we have worked hard on this year. I must say driven extremely well by Professor Mifsud, um, the Erasmus, the mobility, okay? We have signed a number of agreements with foreign universities. And this is, these are fantastic opportunities um, where you have um, mobilities, traineeships, where the mobilities are you go and spend um, some time in another university abroad uh, where you will follow lectures and those count as credits for your course in Malta or else plus that, and we are working on more, but it's, 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 it's quite, uh, uh, it's quite a job to, to find these. And then there are the Erasmus traineeships where um, you uh, go to, to, it could be a university or an entity, an, a related entity, let's say that, and you spend some time working there. Okay, these are EU, EU programs. Yes, there is some funding for them. In all fairness, it doesn't cover everything, but it is really worth the experience. As I said, you can continue your studies in um, as in MSc pharmacotoxicology, which Professor Mesut is going to um, talk about. Then you can do by research an MSc in general pharmacology, an MSc by research in clinical pharmacology therapeutics, and also if you choose, you can continue to read for a PhD with us in pharmacology, or go into medicine, or study abroad, or whatever. Uh, as I hinted before you are have free membership to international societies such as the British Pharmaceutical Society where there you have access to a lot of resources and you will find many opportunities. As you can see, many of us are very, very international we're, 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 because it's very important we feel for us as a country and us as a course to have international links. These are the entry requirements. Um, you probably know these. So you need the general entry requirements, like for all uh, entry in, for all courses at university. And then the special requirements for our course is a pass at advanced level at grades you're better in biology and passes at intermediate in chemistry and in one of the following su subjects, computing physics. Um, IT, pure maths, or applied maths. Um, so these are the entry requirements, which you can have here. You can see on the university website. You are all you are all familiar with them. Next. So this is where you apply for the undergraduate courses. Okay, I am sure you are adequately familiar. We don't have WHO CC slide, Janet. She forgot. <laughs> okay. Can we go to the first slide? The, the starting slide. Okay. As you can see over here, can you see over here? We as a department, as a department, we have been designated as a WHO collaborating center for health professionals, education and research. That for us and for us as a department, for us as a faculty and for us as a university is a significant honor. Uh, we are asked to support WHO in their work. 
they do not. It is not a paid, um, it's not a paid, uh, it's, it's a title, but we do a lot of work for them. Um, I give you two examples, quick example, um, and we get also possibilities to conduct research. Currently, we have uh, we are in the process of submitting a person who's going to do a PhD looking at um, IT requirements in health education, medical education. At the moment, I am working on another task, which is very current and very interesting, um, which is um, we are looking at, as you know, the war, there is a war in Ukraine, and we are looking at the, the, the there are very many people who are injured and they need rehab. So we are looking at curricula to help these countries that are at war have proper curricula to train people to provide uh, these services. While Professor Ripsut is head of the department, I am head of as a collaborating center, not of the department. That is her, <laughs> her pleasure, not mine. I think that is all from my part, right? If they want to ask, we have a, a bunch of lovely students. Again, they are always smiling. We love them loads. We hope they love us loads too. <laughs> so, um, as I said, we are a small team. We are a small core team, okay? But um, with our heart in the light, right places, and we always try to do our best for our students. I think I've said enough, and I think you'll have more fun with Maya now. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much, Professor Kadid. And apologies about missing the WHO slide. I was going so, to mention it as well. Um, apologies. So now I will hand over uh, to Maya and to Janelle. There she is. Uh, Janelle's video for, ah, yes, it's working now. Great. So just a brief, uh, so Maya is our second year student, so she's done two years in the course, and Janelle is our first year student, and she'll be going on Erasmus as well. So Maya, would you like to say something about your experience in the course? Uh, Professor Cordina has very well explained what the course content is. Uh, I originally went into this course not knowing much about pharmacology. I just knew that I didn't want medicine and I chose this. And I can say that after two years, I am very happy with my decision. The course is very widespread. You learn a lot. You meet so many different people. And especially this year, we got opportunities to visit uh, Mater Day, Caring Rack, and even different site visits and all the laboratory experiments that we did. So it's not just sitting in a lecture hall listening. Um, as well, something that we've created is PACT, which is a student society to even further welcome new students, even more than the department already welcomes everyone. Um, and yes, that's pretty much it, I think. Thank you very much, Maya. The students' organization is working very hard. They're working as well to be recognized by KSU, and they also organize a lot of activities. And they That's have a very cool website. Yes, oh, not website, website, Facebook page. Sorry, I just, I just... Oh, yes, you should join your Facebook page. Jane? So, to begin with, um, in the beginning of my first year, it wasn't easy um, to get used to university life. However, um, the pharmacology department is so welcoming and so supportive that they help you. They for sure will help you in every step of the way. Um, I, I think that pharmacology is a, a very interesting branch of medicine. And I, I, I found it interesting how medicine works and how they affect our body. So if this interests you as well, then this is the ideal course for you. And Janelle uh, did very well. She was one of the two students selected. She'll be going to the University of Galway um, at the end of August, beginning of September. She's be spending the first semester here. So she will be, I'm sure, an excellent ambassador uh, for the course. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Janelle and Maya. Thank you. So now I hand over, uh, I am aware there are some questions in the queue and they will answer the questions at the end. So this is now an overview of the master's in pharmacotoxicology course. So as Professor Cordina mentioned, besides the, uh, the, the research master's and the PhDs, we also organize this pharmacotoxicology course. It's a part-time evening course, and it is six semesters. So it's basically two calendar years. We include the summer semester as a semester. And the lectures are given normally twice a week. So far, we've given them Tuesdays and Thursdays between four and eight. And as I shall be explaining, even though this is a taught course um, face to face, but we have several international faculty 
thanks also to Mr. Mark Zamit, who is our international ambassador on pharmacotoxicology and has a lot of networks. So actually, I would say 70% of the lectures are given by international talk experts in the field, and they are given, of course, over Zoom, although some of them have actually offered to come to Malta and give the lectures face to face. So what is pharmacotoxicology? Toxicology, you all know what it is. That is the science of poisons. Um, toxicologists, in fact, study the presence and effects of all types, potential types of poisons. And we are surrounded by poisons. In fact, this course is very important. Why? Because Malta took a decision a few years ago to set up a poison center in the life sciences park. So we need more toxicologists on the island. We have a big lack of toxicologists. In fact, when we came to set up this course, we had huge support, both from the Ministry for Health, as well from the various regulatory authorities who are involved in uh, understanding what poisoning is. So persons who are specialized in pharmacotoxicology will work in poison center, laboratories, the pharmaceutical industry. We do have uh, several lectures from the industry and even regulatory agents. So pharmacotoxicology is basic an understanding of the main mechanisms of toxicology by medicines and drugs. Okay, but we also go into other types of poisons. So we go, for example, into poisons due to animals or to plants or to um, you know exposure to certain um, metals, for example, or other chemical compounds. We are surrounded by poisons. So as a career, toxicology provides the excitement of science and research, yet helps to protect public health and environment. What are the entry requirements? To enter this course, of course, it is uh, good that you do have a background in pharmacology. At least you would have covered one study unit or some study units in pharmacology. We do provide the basis, but if you do have um, if you don't have that basics in pharmacology, actually we do offer the possibility that you do that pharmacology study unit at the same time while you start the course. So you do it as, as um, together, we do one study unit together with our pharmacology students. So you are eligible if you have, you are a medic, you have a degree of doctor medicine surgery, dental surgery, pharmacy, any allied health science degree as a department to we lecture practically all healthcare scientists, nurses, midwives, dentists, podiatrists, food scientists, OTs, physios. Um, we even lecture uh, BSc chemistry, BSc chemistry and biology and psychology students and even law students. So those students already have some understanding of pharmacology and be eligible to join this course. So any bachelor's, together with a bachelor's degree in medical uh, biochemistry, for example, pharmaceutical science or pharmacology, anything which has a pharmacology component in it. So the aim, of course, as I said already, is to provide specialized stuff in pharmacotoxicology. So we envisage, we have discussions going on right now with the ministry because our first cohort will be graduating by the end of the year, uh, working in emergency medicine, in the poison center, drug information services, toxicology lab, and even with the regulatory authorities. For example, we have very good links with the Malta Consumer um, Affairs um, Authority, which actually regulates all the medicines, all the chemical compounds which actually enter the island. So there's a, we have actually some of their staff who are lecturers as well. As I said, it's six semesters, that is three years, but two years if the dissertation is covered in, some, in the summer months. So what, this is what the course looks like. Of course, I'm going to go into details. You can see the details um, on the relevant website, which, we sh which are, I should be sharing on the next slide. So we go into the basics. You have to do like any other students in master's basics and science methods, research methods and some statistics. And then we go into a lot of very interesting topics, risk assessment, non pharmacological agents, drug abuse and sports, preventive forensic and regulatory pharmacotoxicology. And then there is also a dissertation, which is 30 ECTS. By the way, we put on the deadline for the application, but with all these courses, late applications will be accepted. This is the course details and the entry requirements. Uh, 
Mr. Zamit, would you like to add something to what I just said before I hand over to Jake and Daniel for their experience in the course? Thank you. No, what, um, what I would like to add is that um, this course was a great role for our, for our university. And I think, you know, it's very important to realize how, how important uh, poisonings are as a matter of public health around the world. You know, we estimate that, for example, um, in 2019, there were almost half a million fatalities in the world attributed to illicit drug use, for example. And, you know, around 100,000 uh, deaths a year in the world related to acute chemical poisoning. More than half a million deaths caused by hazardous substances at workplaces around the world. So this is a, an, an issue which is of, um, you know, very important. And in fact, it's also a priority um, uh, within the World Health Organization. In fact, last week I was in Budapest for a ministerial conference on the subject on chemical safety around the world. And, and, and I in fact presented on the importance of poison centers. So this course, which is, as Professor Mifsud said, also lectured by you know luminaries in the field from all around the world. We have lecturers from the USA, we have lecturers from all around Europe, from, from all continents, essentially. So you will have a, a, a wide breadth of the subject, which I think you know will, will empower you in becoming more effective professionals within, within the field of healthcare. And the opportunities are many. Um, we are, in fact, um, as Professor Mifsud said, you know, currently in the process of, of, of opening, of launching the, the first multinational poisons center, which would be multidisciplinary. And this master's course will surely open up um, a lot of doors, both nationally as well as internationally. Thank you, Mr. Zamit. I will now hand over to Daniel and Jake to share for them to share their experience of the two years. They've done two years. Now they're in their last semester finalizing their dissertation. They've just got their examination, final examination results to share their experience. Uh, will you start, Daniel? Yes. Um, so this course has been really interesting so far. So we, we learned all about poisons from, from both the clinical and industrial as well as environmental and occupational and forensic. And there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fields. So we're learning all about how these, uh, how these poison works and how to manage them effectively. Um, we are all full-time full-time worker so this this stuff has been very very kind and accommodating us and making sure we we all you know we, we all managed to attend the lectures and <laughs> um, <laughs> and manage our time effectively we also had the an opportunity to work in, in in a laboratory for which for my dissertation and i'm carrying out um some some experiments on oleander on live cells which has been very interesting and we as mark said we have had lectures from world-renowned experts which has been very interesting and very insightful to to get their their perspective because they have first first-hand experience and they are revolu revolutionizing the field so it's been it's been a great course so far thank you very I, much that's all from my side Thank you. I have to also, I forgot to include it, but our um, master students are also eligible for the Erasmus traineeships. And the fact Daniel has been accepted uh, once he finishes the course, because traineeships can be taken after you finish the course, uh, up to a year after finish the course, to go for a traineeship in uh, the Netherlands. We have very good links with the Netherlands. And if accepted, Daniel, to, to, be, to work in the laboratory. Thank you very much, Daniel. And now I hand over to Jake for his experience in the course. Hi, um, good evening. Um, uh, as um, Professor Mifsud, uh, Professor Zamit and Daniel all said very well, um, we basically covered um, as much as there is to cover. So um, as we did, everything can be a poison depending on how much and how it is used. So um, this field, although I, I, I wasn't aware of it before the course, is very relevant nowadays. Um, I left medicine and not really knowing where to put, where to sort of place myself. And uh, I'm very grateful that uh, Professor Mipsud contacted me to sort of um, try out this course. 
it's been um, a very interesting two years. Like Daniel said, we all sort of have to manage our time with full-time jobs. So it's it's um, not going to say a walk in the park, but it's it's a very doable and a very nice challenge to have. Um, the experts are all uh, really, really, really um, knowledgeable in their field. The, le the lectures were all really interesting, and we've covered everything from pharmaceuticals to flowers to plants to marine um, organisms to industrial products. Um, and like Daniel said as well, the dissertations um, provide an opportunity to either carry out an audit, work with forensics, work inside the lab, work with cancer cells, um, where we're all um, very respected and um, we have sort of a very good opportunity to apply ourselves and our knowledge um, in practice, sort of. So that's all I have to say. It's, I think it's a very good opportunity. Thank, thank you very much, Rick. I do have to say, as I've mentioned, um, um, I would say around 70% of their lectures were carried out by Zoom, and we are well aware that some people, in fact, work on shift basis, and we've always made arrangements with the lecturers that, of course, if a person cannot get out of, get out of work, we always make arrangements that the lectures um, are recorded and notes are provided to make sure that the students, at the end of the day, these are mature students, they're doing this because they want to, not because they have to, and we've always come to a good, very good understanding and agreement with all the lectures and the way that they've delivered the, cor the courses and even how we organize uh, the, the dates. As I said, the lectures are given, I would say 90% Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, between uh, four and eight into our slots, of course, not four hours, always with the same lecture. Thank you very much, Jake and Daniel.